God bless you. God bless you so much. Um, I bless God for this day. Today, by the grace of God, we have a very short message. Um, and I just want to talk about running back to the Father. Amen. I just want to talk about running back to the Father. So let's give ourselves about one or two minutes and we'll just go into the Word of God. You may share this broadcast to bless someone else, please. We want to talk about running back to the Father. God bless you so much. Please get your Holy Bible. This video is going to be very short. It is going to be very short, very, very short. I just want to explain running back to the Father. Amen. Running back to the Father. I love this song. I'm just going to explain running back to the Father, why we do the running back to the Father fasting. So please, um, I know that it's going to be a great blessing to you. Amen. I'm just going to explain running back to the Father. Please get your Holy Bible ready. In about two minutes, two minutes, we are going straight into the Word of God. And I pray that the Holy Spirit of God will have His way. All right. Faithful God, we give you all the praise, we give you all the honor. I pray, Holy Spirit, that this day you have your way. Speak through your servant. I pray that Father, people will know, will come to your knowledge, will know why we do the running back to the Father fasting. I ask in the name of Jesus that you have your way in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you, Fatuma, for joining. God bless everybody else that has joined. Um, I, I'm, we are just going to explain running back to the Father. Amen. We're just going to explain running back to the Father because um, most of the time, as many of you would attest to a fact, that every month, by the grace of God, we come up with a fasting. Every month, you know, we come up sometimes with a 21 days fasting, 7 days, 3 days, or even 1 day fasting. You know, I make sure that by the grace of God, I make sure that every month we do a fast. We do a fasting. And the theme or the title for the fasting is running back to the Father. Running back to the Father. Um, uh, running back to the Father, but they have different themes, you know. But the main, title, the main topic, or, I mean the main whatever caption or title or whatever it is is running back to the father and so people may be wondering why, why what, what is that what is running back to the father amen and so today by the grace of god i just want to explain a little bit about why we do the running back to the father fasting amen why we do the running back to the father fasting and and i'm, I'm very sure that by the grace of god this is going to be a great blessing to you susie god bless you for joining amen we just want to explain why we do the running back to the Father. Maggie, God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, um, one day, one day I was with a woman. I was with, you know, um, somebody, a woman that, that is a, in her 50s. And because I went to their house, I went to the woman's house because of her daughter. 
no, no, I wasn't interested that because of a younger daughter that I pray with. So I visited their house. And you know, when, when I was there, when I was in the living room, the woman walked inside. The woman didn't know that I was there, probably. She didn't know that I was there. And then she started yelling at her daughter, the, the, the young lady that I had gone to visit. So the woman started yelling at her. Let me play some instrumentals. Um, so the woman started yelling at the daughter, you know, and she spoke she, she spoke the Ghanaian language. Wasun Wasun Tiasem. Like you are ear hardened. You don't listen. You don't listen. And this young lady is one, she's one of a kind. She's somebody that I can vouch on. She's somebody that I can tell everybody that this lady is very respectful. Very, very respectful. You know, so when the woman, you know, so, so the woman was coming in, I mean, inside the living room, she, as she was approaching the living room, she didn't know that they had gotten a visitor. They, she didn't know I was there. But she started screaming at the daughter that was soon tiasa, you don't listen. You are very disrespectful. That she spoke in English. She said, you are very disrespectful. You know, so when she saw me, she was like, oh, sorry, man of God. Sorry, 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 sorry. So I'm like, mama. You know, I was trying to act spiritual. I was trying to act like, you know, you know, like most of us Christians do. I was trying to be spiritual. So I was like, Mama, you have to be careful the kind of words you use for your children, which is true, though. And, and I said, because the Bible says Jabez's own mother, you know, called him Jabez because of the pain. And a man, a, a man that was supposed to be honorable because of what her mother said, you know, because of what her mother said, you know, that honorability wasn't manifesting. And so I was trying to act spiritual. And I said, Mama, you know your daughter. Your daughter is very humble. She doesn't like, you know, she's not into men. She's not, in, she's very simple, very prayerful, very God-fearing, very calm. She's helpful to you. So why are you calling her disrespectful? Does she disrespect, does she insult you? Because usually when we say someone is disrespectful, we mean that, you know, most times it, there are people who can easily, I mean, insult you. But the woman said, because the lady was sick, the woman said, you know, she bought the, the lady, the young lady, some medicine to take. But the lady has refused to take it. And the woman said, you know, most of the time, when I tell her to do something, she refuses to do. And so the mother was calling her daughter disrespectful, not because she insulted her, not because she, she stole or fornicated or did something bad, but because she refused to follow simple instructions. Amen. The Bible says, Jesus said in the book of John 10, 27, it says, my sheep know me, they hear my voice, and they follow, they listen to it. Amen. So, beloved, you know, being disrespectful is not, a, it's not just by you insulting people. Being disrespectful is not just by you putting up a deviant behavior, but you can be disrespectful when you fail to obey simple instructions. Amen. When you are disrespectful, you fail to obey simple instructions. Amen. And that is one of the reasons why we do the running back to the Father fasting. Hallelujah. Now watch this. When you are married, I believe there are married couple that are watching this. If you, you, you encounter, any, you know, when you, when you are going to marry, they will tell you that, you know, right now it is you and your wife. It is you and your husband. But guess what? When you encounter something that is beyond you, when you encounter maybe a misunderstanding or something that is beyond the two of you, what do you do? You go back to your parents for advice. You will not say, right now we are also parents. Right now we are also married couple. And so we have to sit down. No, no, no. You go back to your parents because they are the source of wisdom. They are the source of peace. You know that that is, you know, I believe we, we are, even if you are not married, I believe you've been in a relationship before. You know, the, the, I believe there is someone that both of you respect in that relationship. And so whenever there's a confrontation, misunderstanding, there's somebody that you, you run to, amen, for help. Amen. Okay. And so the reason why we do the running back to the Father, number one, is that the Father is the, our main source of strength, is our main source of wisdom, is our main source of power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah.
When you read the book of Luke chapter 17, when you read Luke chapter 17, I want us to read Luke 17. Amen. And I believe it's also in John chapter 9. So Luke 17. Let's read Luke 17. Amen. So we're just explaining why we do the running back to the Father. And it is very important. You know, one of the deceptions in life is to think just by raising your, lifting your hand and saying, I receive Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. That's it. No. That is, a, that is one of the greatest, you know, deception in ministry or in the in, in our work with God. Amen. You know, that when you say, I receive Jesus as my Lord and my Savior, that's it. No, 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 no. Be true to yourself. When you receive Jesus as, the, as your Lord and your Savior, there are, there are still attacks against you. You are still struggling. If you, you are still struggling even to overcome sin. You know, nothing really changed. Except for a conscious effort to refrain certain things. God bless you, man of God, Kobe. Amen. You see, but the truth, is, the truth is that we have to gain a conscious effort. We have to know that there is a father that we must always run back to. Most of you in ministry, you know how you got that anointing. You know how you got that gift. You know, and, 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 and by the grace of God, we are all gifted. And there are times that the gift, you, you can't even see its manifestation. There are times that you can't even dream again. There are times that you can't hear from God again. From, there are times that you can't get a vision again. These are the times that you always run back to the Father. But my, my, my beloved, I want you to know that don't wait till the... To the dreams are not coming, the visions are not coming, the gifts are not manipulating, I mean manifesting before you go to your daddy. Every day you must run back to the father. Amen. Okay, so I'm reading Luke chapter 17 from verse 11. Luke 17 from verse 11. Hallelujah. Um, it says, and you know, it says, and it came to pass as he, which is Jesus, went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, who stood at a distance. They were lepers, and so they stood at a distance. Uh, my, my pastor was telling us today that um, in those days when you were a leper, when you were a leper, you have to, you know, we have to, you have to announce your presence so that people will give way because you are not allowed to, you know, to be in the midst of people. Just imagine that such a disgraceful disease. So the Bible says Jesus was passing and these 10 lepers, they stood at a distance. Amen. Verse 13, Luke 17, verse 13. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. 14. And when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And it came to pass that as they were going, they were cleansed. Amen. These were lepers. Lepers were, you know, leprous is usually it burns their fingers. You know, it's a, it's a very disgraceful sickness. Now, these ten lepers, they saw Jesus passing by. They cried to him. They cried to Jesus Christ. That be merciful to us. Have mercy, Master Jesus. God bless you, man of God. God, he said, God you know, have mercy on us, Master Jesus. God, have mercy on us. These ten lepers, they cried to Jesus. Amen. And for so many of us, there are certain things, certain things in our lives that is like almost like a leprosy. For so many of us, there are so many things we are going through that is almost like a leprosy amen your leprosy may be you, you know the fact that you are single your leprosy may be the fact that you are struggling financially your leprosy may be the fact that you are living in sin and you want to live and for most of us we cried to the lord we prayed we fasted we believed in god but the bible says jesus gave them a direction it says go and show yourself to the priest when they were obedient to the voice of jesus they are here Healing, they became healed. The Bible said they were cleansed on their way. Amen. They were cleansed on their way. Now, 15. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. Amen. He turned back and with a loud voice he glorified God. 16. Luke 17, 16. And fell down on his feet at Jesus' feet. Amen. Giving Jesus thanks. 
and he was a Samaritan. 17. And Jesus said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? 18. There are not found returning to there are not found returning to give thanks and glory to God. Save this stranger. You see, the stranger, the Samaritan, was the one that came back to Jesus and gave thanks. You see, this is Jesus. He gave them a direction. He says, go and show yourselves to the priest. But when they were on their way going, the Bible said one of them was cleansed. And the one that was healed, the one that was, you know, all, I mean, all of them were cleansed. All the ten were healed from leprosy. But the one of them who, who was even a stranger, a Samaritan, the Bible says he ran back to the Father. He ran back to Jesus. And to, the Bible says he glorified God. He fell to the feet of Jesus, which means he worshipped the Lord. Amen. And the Bible says Jesus sets him free. Jesus said, hold on, verse 19. God bless you, man of God, Richard. God bless you. Verse 19, Luke 19, I mean Luke 17, verse 19. And he said to him, Arise, depart, your faith has made he made you whole. Amen. Your faith has made you whole. Some versions will say, you know, uh, your faith has set you free. You know, there's a difference between being healed. God bless you, amen. God bless you. The Bible, excuse me. There's a difference between being healed and being made whole. When you are made whole, it means you don't have to worry about anything again. You see, this morning, one, a man of God gave a revelation. He said, you know, to be healed, sometimes you can be healed and you still have the scars over there. But when you are made whole, your skin, you know, you, don't, you, you can't find the scar anymore. Your, your skin becomes like that of a baby. Amen. And this is one of the reasons why we run back to the Father. Because for most of us, there are so many things we are holding on right now. We are holding on to our marriages. People are failing to go to church to pray because right now they are giving excuses because of their children. But remember how you remember where you got that child from. Remember how you used to pray the Lord bless me with a child. Remember how you used to pray the Lord give me marriage. Remember how you used to pray the Lord give me a child. Remember how you used to pray for some thing that you are believing God for but right now because he gave that thing to you you are giving excuses you don't want to go to the Lord again you don't want to pray again you are giving excuses but beloved if you can be like the one leper who out of the ten ran back to the father to give thanks to him the Lord will make you whole this is one of the reasons why we run back to the father don't just go to the Lord God bless you my sister Francesca you know, don't just go to the Lord just because you are in need of something. Don't just go be to the Lord just because you want something to happen for you. Don't just go to the Lord just because the enemy is attacking you. Go to the Lord to say, thank you, Lord Jesus. When you wake up in the morning, you have to understand that you never woke up because of your alarm. Listen. You no, don't don't think it is your alarm that woke you up, because many times there are people who set alarm and they oversleep. It has happened to me many times. I set alarm to wake me up, and by the time I woke up, the alarm failed me. It rang, but I couldn't wake up. And so every morning when you wake up, you have to run back to the Father. You have to know that I am alive because of this God. Because guess what? If you if you put the loudest alarm on, on a dead body, they will never wake up again. You never woke up because of an alarm. You never woke up because somebody called you on the phone. It is by this Father, Lord Jesus Christ, that you are alive. And so ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the reasons why we run back to the Father. We run back to the Father because He's the reason why we are living. We run back to the Father because we are not alive because we prayed. We are not alive because we fasted. We run back to the Father to say, thank you, Lord Jesus. And so, for whatever you have received, right now you are giving excuses. I am also giving excuses because of my job. I can't come. I can't pray. I can't do this. 
you are given excuses so ladies and gentlemen that is why by the grace of god every month every month the lord lays on my heart that let's do a running back to the father fasting because beloved it is about time that we come to our senses and go to our lord so so i've given about three instances reasons why we run back to the father another instance is when you read the book of luke chapter 11 i believe about the prodigal son i believe it's in luke chapter 11 i think or 15 luke chapter 11 or luke chapter 15 i think the bible says when he went away he squandered his money he finished his money and the bible says you know when he came back to his senses he decided to run back to the father he said you know why am i here struggling why am i eating with swamp with 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 with, with pigs why and so one of the reasons why you must run back to the father is when you know you have messed up when you know god gave you something but you have destroyed it don't stay in that sin don't stay in that mistake yes you have made a mistake don't stay in there run back to the father because he's so merciful he's so faithful and he's so just to receive you again the bible says when they run when the prodigal son ran back to the father the father accepted him amen the father accepted him and made it restored him amen maybe maybe you have made a mistake maybe god gave you something you have messed it up maybe you there is a call of god upon you you run away from it you messed up and so right, right now people know your sin people know your mistake and so you feel shy listen men may give up on you everybody may give up on you but this jesus will never give up on you it is embedded on you it is it is upon you to run back to the father this is one of the reasons why we run back to the father you know we can pretend i can i can come and stand here and pretend like i'm a righteous a holy 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 person but maybe i know some of the mistakes i make i know some of the ways i sin and so many of us we have been living in deception as if we are a superhuman as if we don't get angry as if we don't get jealous as if we don't get bitter but these are some of the reasons why we run back to the father and say lord i am gifted but when my brother got a blessing i got jealous lord i am gifted but when i saw a beautiful lady i i looked at her lastly lord i am anointed but i've made this mistake i have failed to be praying i failed to worship and so this morning I'm running back to the Father. Don't think you are okay. Don't think you you, you know be, when you messed up, you say, Father, forgive me. And so that is okay. No, you must remorsefully run back to the Father. Another, in, so the Bible says, you know, when the prodigal son came back to the Father, when he came to his senses, the Father restored him. Another story, another scenario. Is in the book of Job, chapters 1 and 2. God bless you, Bishop. Bishop Jeffrey, God bless you so much, great man of God. You know, Job chapters 1 and 2. The Bible says, the Bible says, you know, the sons of God went to present themselves to the Lord. And Satan, who had been going to and fro, looking for someone to destroy, because he was unproductive, because because what he was trying to do was not successful he joined the angels running back to the father to the lord god almighty and even satan though he was a rebel though he had fought god though he had stolen one fourth of his angels even one third of his angels when he ran back to the father when he ran back to the father joining the angels to run back to the father god asked him why are you here what what have you been doing where have you been he said i've been going to and fro and god said have you considered my son job beloved this is also one of the reasons why we run back to the father 
God bless you, my, my brother, Evangelist Gabriel. I will see you in Ghana very soon, very soon. I'll be in Ghana by the um, call be a man, man of God. God bless you. Amen. So we are explaining sir, why we do the running back to the Father fasting. Why run back to the Father? So even Satan, like I'm saying, amen, even Satan, the Bible says, when he joined the angels, running back to the Father, because he was going to and fro, and he was and he was unproductive but when he joined the angels running back to the father even though he was a rebel even though he was very disobedient very disrespectful even though he had stolen one third of god's angel because he ran back to the father god granted him his requests god gave him the best of sons the Bible says in the book of Job chapter 1 verse 8 that God said, you know, in all the in all the I mean the earth, Job is the best. Job is the best. But guess what? God gives Satan the rebel, the rebel, the thief, the disobedient. God gave him the best, which is Job. He says, go after Job. Do whatever you want with him. Listen. This is one of the reasons why we run back to the Father. When you know maybe you have sinned against God. Maybe you have been rebellious to God himself. It doesn't matter what you have done. Maybe you have been disobedient. Many times we are disobedient to God. Many times we are rebellious to the Lord. And we don't know. We are not aware. Sometimes God will tell you that take, give this watch to someone. But you, this watch is expensive. Why should I give it to them? They don't even dress nice. What are they going to use this watch for? So many times we have been disobedient. God bless you, Clara. God bless you. Many times we've been disobedient. But listen, even Satan, the one that was a rebel, he was rebellious to God. Even Satan, the one that stole one third of his angels, the Bible says he joined the angels of the Lord. He joined the sons of God, running back to the Father. And when they ran back to the Father, God gave him the best of sons. God answered, gave him his requests. What have you done wrong? What is the mistake you have made? People may not, people may not know. You are a man of God. You are a woman of God. Everybody sees you to be manifesting the gift. But you know how rebellious you have been to God. You know how disobedient you have been to God. You know how you have messed up. Yes, the gift may be, may be manifesting. Yes, the anointing may be manifesting. Yes, you still go to church. But you know what you have done, how disrespectful you have disrespected God. Like the example I gave earlier, I visited a woman, I visited a, a young lady, and the womb, and the mother didn't know that I was in the house. The mother walked in the in the living room and started saying that the lady, the young lady, is very disrespectful. Um, you are hard, you are ear hard, and you don't listen. But this is a very respectful young lady. I asked the woman why. Your child is a, is very respectful. Why would you use that way? And she said, because she is sick, I gave her medicine to, to take, she refused to take it. Yes, when you refuse to do what God wants you to do, you are very disrespectful. You may be praying, you may be fasting, you may be, you may be singing, you may be doing anything. But for failing to do what God has assigned you to do, you are very disrespectful. This is one of the reasons why we run back to the Father. This is one of the reasons why we run back to the Father. God said in the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8, He said, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, He said, I am ready to give you my Holy Spirit. But when it comes upon you, there is a power that you shall receive. And what you will do with the power is that you will be a witness. Talk about me. But you fail to do it. You fail to talk about Jesus. He has given you an, an instruction that will be witness unto me. Talk about me. But you can sit down for 10 hours and talk about your boyfriend. You can sit down for 15 hours and try to convince people about your girlfriend, about your boyfriend, how good he is, how, she, how good she is. 
but you can't even talk about Jesus. And you think because you are fasting, you think because you are praying, you think because you haven't, you haven't had sex in a long time, you think you are okay? No. You are also very disrespectful to God. Because he said, my sheep know me, they listen, they follow, they obey me. This is one of the reasons why we run back to the Father. A lot of men and women of God have failed God. A lot of men and women of God have been disrespectful to God. Yes, they are preaching. They are preaching their own sermons. They are doing their thing. Yes. They are advising. Many, many servants of God have turned into advisors. Jesus said, go, win souls. Win souls. It's not just about new souls. The Bible says he sent the 12 disciples to the lost sheep. To the lost sheep, which means they were sheep. They were already believers, but they are lost. But you sit down and say, oh, if they will, if they will leave the church, let them go. This is one of the reasons why we have to run back to the Father. We shouldn't judge anyone. Yes, what they did is bad. But we have to, the Bible says the Lord will, will leave the 99 and go after the lost one. These are all reasons why we run back to the Father. As a beloved, please, if you joined late, when this video is over, please watch it again. So that you understand why we run back to the Father. I'm going to give a last scenario, amen, by the grace of God. I'm going to give a last reason, a last scenario why we run back to the Father. Amen. And that we want to read from the book of Jeremiah chapter 18. Jeremiah 18. One, one, the last re one reason why we run back to the Father. Jeremiah 18. Jeremiah 18. Jeremiah chapter 18. Where is it? Where is Jeremiah? You know. I am explaining all this because I want people to know the essence of running back to the Father. How important it is to run back to the Father. Amen. Okay, Jeremiah 18, I'm reading from verse 1. I'm reading verse 1. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the porter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Verse 3. Then I went down to the porter's house, and behold, he wrought a work in his hand, uh, I mean, sorry, on, on the wheels. Verse 4, Jeremiah 18, verse 4. And the vessel that he made of clay was made in the hand of the porter. So he made it again, another vessel. So for instance, the porter made this. The porter is someone that makes objects from clay. So he said, I went to the porter's house and the porter will make like an, this object, you know, and when, the, when he was done with the object and some of them are stuck in his hands or even when he's done with the object, he's able to, he's able to, you know, he's able to destroy it and make another object out of it. Amen. God bless you. He said, so, so, he said, I went to the porter's house. God bless you, Mavis. God bless you for joining. You know, he said, I went to the porter's house. And he was making objects out of clay. And when he was done with the object, he would destroy it and make another object, another vessel out of it. I'm reading the verse 4 again. Jeremiah 18, verse 4. Jeremiah 18, I'm reading verse 4 again. And the vessel that... He, that he made of clay was made in the hand of the porter so he made it again another vessel as it seemed good to the porter to make it verse 5 jeremiah 18 verse 5 then the word of the lord came to me saying "O house of israel cannot i do with you as this porter says the lord behold as the clay is in the hands of the porter, so are you in my hand, house of Israel. This is one, this is one of the reasons, this is another reason why we run back to the Father. You are a clay in the hands of God. No matter how messed up your life may be, 
No matter how messed up our destinies may be, sometimes by our own mistakes, sometimes by the works of the enemy, sometimes by attacks, sometimes by our sinful nature. As long as we know that we are a, we are a clay in the hands of the porter, as long as we know that the Lord is able to remote us, no matter how, what we have done wrong, no matter what the enemy has done against us, no matter how our lives are messed up, we can go and, listen, we can go back to the Father, run back to the Father, we know, and we know that He's able to remote our lives. But listen, there is a key here. The porter can, could only make another object, another vessel, as long as the porter could only make another object or, or, or vessel as long as the clay is still in his reach, in his hands. If the clay is not in his hands, he's a porter, but he may not be able to make it into another vessel. So you are the clay. If you don't run back to the hands of the Lord, if you don't run back to the Father, he may desire to make another object out of you, but you may be too far. This is one of the reasons why we run back to the Father, ladies and gentlemen. This is one of the reasons why we run back to the Father. That, Lord, my marriage is messed up. My destiny is messed up. My ministry is messed up. Maybe it is my mistake. Maybe it is the attack of the enemy. Maybe, it, well, regardless of how, what caused it, I know that you are able to remold me. And so I am running back to you. This is one of the reasons why we run back to the Father, ladies and gentlemen. God bless you, man of God, Nanapia. God bless you so much, man of God. We run back to the Father because as long as we remain a clay in His hands, He's able to remold us. It doesn't matter how much our lives have been destroyed. It doesn't matter how much our situations have been messed up. It doesn't matter the problems and the challenges we face. Beloved, we run back to the Father because we know that He's the only one that can fix us. Listen, when your car breaks down, when your car breaks down, you may be a medical doctor, but you have to take your car to someone that may be less educated than you. Because guess what? They are experts. They are the ones that, that can do it. And so if, if your life messes up, stop giving your lives to people. Stop giving, stop, stop talking too much to people. If there is anybody, you must present your situation to, it's not a counselor. Counselors are good, yes. But you have to learn to run back to the, the one that made you. He's the only one that can remold you. He's the only one that can refix you. People may give up on you. People may give up on you. Somebody can see you and say, Oh, you look, you used to be very beautiful. What happened to you? Don't cry. Just run back to the Father and say, Lord, I've seen changes and it is not good for me. Please change me. Remold me, Lord. People can see and say, you used to be very respect respectful. You used to love people. You used to be very kind. What happened to you? Why do you get angry like that? Don't justify your anger. Don't justify pride. Run back to the Father and say, Lord, I am on my knees. I think I am becoming proud. Change me. You don't just go to God because you want something from Him. You, want, you always want to make sure that you are in the right, you, you are in the right standing with God. Ladies and gentlemen, I have explained a number of reasons why we run back to the Father. I have explained many reasons why we run back to the Father. Oops. Sorry. I'm about to end this video. But I encourage you that if possible, every morning, every afternoon, every evening, you too 
run back to the Father. Whenever you are able to wake up in the morning, know that you, you are not up because of your alarm. You, and you, are, you are not up because of your alarm. You know that it is because of Jesus that gave you that life. You are not better than those that died. When, when you step out of the house and get to your destination, know that you did not get there because you are beautiful. You got there because Jesus kept you. You have to run back and say, Daddy, thank you. Thank Jesus. Learn to run back to the Father. Let it be a daily, a daily thing that you do. Let it be a momentarily thing, something that you always do. When someone blesses you, know that they did not do it. Run back to the Father and say, Daddy, you sent an angel my way. Thank you. Bible says, in all your ways, acknowledge God. That means run back to the Father. Recognize His presence in everything, all your ways. Whether it is painful, whether it is happy, it is joyful. Run back to the Father. This moment, I just want you to pray. I'm ending the video in two minutes. But I just want you to pray that, Lord, however my life is, I run back to you. You are the porter and I am the clay. I may not know how you, mold my, you molded my life. Maybe the enemy has detached something, but I don't even know. Maybe I was supposed to be richer than this, but I don't even know that the enemy has destroyed it. Maybe I was supposed to be anointed than this, but I don't even know. But Lord, I run back to you. I run back to you, the Father. Look at this vessel that you molded. Search around me. If there is any mess in me, fix me. Just open up your mouth just for one minute. And pray the Lord, fix me, Lord. Father, I lift my hands as a sign of surrender to you, Lord. The Father, I present my whole life to you, Jesus. My destiny is in your hands, Lord. My character, my attitudes are before you, Lord. Father, if anything has gone wrong, by my own ways, by my own mistakes, by my pride, by my arrogance, by my fear, by my intimidation, by the attacks of the enemy. However, anything has gone wrong about my destiny, about this, this vessel you have created, Lord. Please fix me, Lord. Please remold me, Lord. Wherever my health, fix me wherever I am sick. Wherever anything has gone wrong, Jesus, I present my life to you, Lord. I am a clay in your hands. Remold my life, Jesus. Do not look upon my sins to deal with me, Lord. Do not look upon my pride to deal with me, Lord. Humble me. Remold me, Jesus. Fix me, Lord. Glorify yourself in me. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved, I want you to continue to pray this prayer. This is why we run back to the Father. The Lord, you are the porter and we are the clay. We are clueless how you molded us. You see, this bottle is clueless how the, the manufacturer wanted to. You see, right now, right now, I have fused it. And it is still a bottle. It still has water in it. But it has no idea that its original form was like this. And for so many of us, our lives have been skewed. Skewed. Our lives have been tempered with. And we have no idea. For so many of us, our destinies have been tempered with. And we have no idea. And that is why we run back to the Father. And we say, Daddy, you know the original blueprint. You know the original format. You know what I am supposed to be. How I am supposed to be. I run back to you, Daddy. And I say, fix me. You said that I am a porter. I, I, you are the porter and we are the clay. We are more Lord. 
ladies and gentlemen i bless you in the name of jesus you know this is why these are some of the reasons why we ran back to the father please if you if you miss the beginning of this video please i beg you watch it again and you understand why you must always run back to the father many of us have been you know i'm one person i'm one person that i don't like i don't like when people talk to me about negative stuff i don't like that i don't like when people talk about when people focuses on the devil witches and stuff i don't like that because it brings my spirit down i don't deal with demons i don't deal with witches i don't deal with those kind of things but we we cast them out we destroy them i don't pay attention to them i focus on jesus christ and so i don't i don't like when when we pay too much attention to what satan may be doing if you run back to the father you will not have to worry about the devil if you run back to the father you will not have to worry about what the devil is doing the bible says in romans 8 verse 31 if god be for me who can be against me let's learn god bless you let's learn to run back to the father instead of focusing on demons and witches and no 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 run back to the father every day are you afraid forget about the demon the bible says what can mortal beings what can human beings do against me if god be for you who can be against you this is why we run back to the father beloved very soon we will be doing our next running back to the father fasting and this one the lord told me that make it a five week fasting five week fasting and it's not it's not going to be five like every day in the five weeks no it is going to be one day a week one day a week one day a week for five weeks and the fasting the running back to the father fasting our next one is called the god seeker the god seeker the bible says they that wait upon the lord shall be strong when you read isaiah 58 from verse 3 to 4 down the bible says is this the kind of fasting the fasting that you fast and you go about with your daily chores no the, your daily activities and so this fasting this running back the next running back to the father fasting it is going to be five weeks and you are you everybody is going to choose one day I may choose one day you will choose a different day but for five weeks we are going to do one day one day a week and for the whole day you would stay indoors you will not do anything you will not go anywhere just one day a week the whole day all you'll be doing is to be praying reading the bible worshiping fasting and seeking the face of god that is what we'll be doing for our next running back to the father and i know most of you will see the face of god i know that all, i know that i pray that all of us will see the face of god so the girl seeker fasting that is going to be our next running back to the father fasting the girl seeker five weeks and you choose just one day a week just one day for the five weeks so pretty much it's going to be five days within the five weeks everybody was going to choose one day just one day and for the one day you just stay at home you just worship it's not staying at home to watch tv stay at home listen to preaching pray worship lay down be on your bed shut the phone off and seek the face of god just devote one day for god i bless you in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit god bless you and so i believe that we now know why it is, it is it is very important to be running back to the father god bless you my name is ernest aj button and i approve this message and this message is jesus centered please if you mixed it if you missed it if you missed the beginning kojo kojo poku my brother god bless you if you missed the beginning please go back and watch it amen Nanekria, god bless you so much amen uh, maggie god bless you god bless everybody please so watch it and you understand why we have to run back to the father it's very important very very important you know that you always have to run back to the father 
God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Jesus.